Hey everybody, how is it going? And today, I want to be a little honest. I've kind of, I kind of run out of ideas, sort of, for content that sort of relates to you know uh, all the games that I play for the moment. Because, um, well, of course, this video is about MK11 Aftermath. I just want to give my thoughts because I, it's been about a week and I've been silent. I think on the whole thing. And, yeah, I think it's really cool. Um, you know, Robocop, uh, Fujin, Shiva, the fact that you have Shang Tsung, like in the story, Nightwolf, some Sindel stuff. Uh, I think this is all really cool. Um, but, yeah, I, I just didn't have a lot to say, really, because, I don't know. It's, I just feel like it was sort of self-explanatory, but... Yeah, I felt like it would have been weird if I didn't say anything about it, like anything at all. Um, yeah, so I really do think it's cool. Of course, I have a couple theories that I don't think are going to pan out. Like, for example, apparently, you know, MK11 Aftermath, apparently it's, so it's like $40, and what do you get? You get three characters, I believe you get the stages, and you get the story DLC, too. Um, and... The thing is about the story DLC is it I, I don't remember if each chapter contains three or four fights. I think it's four. So I mean, you could look at this in a number of ways. I think we have definitely three characters we can play as. I think it's definitely going to be Shang Tsung, Nightwolf, Fujin. Okay? Now it's possible those are the only three characters and that's it but i also doubt that because then there's also shiva you probably get to play as her so that's at least four characters which means at least four chapters right but then there are a lot of other characters sort of in the mode like Liu kang's in the mode raiden uh do you get to play as luke maybe there's a Liu kang chapter maybe there's a raiden chapter and then Sindel's in it, maybe she gets a chapter. I mean, I mean, it, they don't have to have four fights each, but, I mean, that's, like, always what they do. So, I mean, and then there's a scene with Baraka. I mean, does he get a chapter, too? You know? Like, I don't know. Like, it would be kind of cool if... We got to play as some of the villain characters because that's not really typical of the story mode. You usually play as the good guys and then you usually fight the bad guys. Sometimes you fight the good guys and usually the reasons are stupid. Like, we're having a disagreement. So right now it's Jax versus Jackie Briggs. <laughs> you know, like like the first fight in the game is what? It, it, it's Cassie versus her mom because... She has to fight her and win to become whatever, right? Lieutenant or whatever. Um, or the commander, you know? I have no idea. So, yeah, I mean, so that would be cool. And, like, I'm going to say, I think it probably four chapters. Because Shiva, I mean, we have to play Shiva, right? And then... You, we also have to play as Fujin. Um, and sh we also have to play as Shang Tsung and Nightwolf. Because why would they even be there, I feel like. But then there's other ones like Sindel. I, it, like, it's possible you play as her, but maybe you don't. And since Liu Kang was kind of like the main character, like at the end. It makes sense. Like... Like, maybe, you know, they have a disagreement, him and Shang Tsung at the beginning, and then maybe you fight him, and then it's like, okay, alright, you know, maybe it's kind of like that, um, but who knows, maybe when Sindel shows up, she's like all, like, confused, and then you have to fight her, you know, it, it could be stuff like that, but anyway, let's move on from that, so basically what I'm trying to say is the story DLC very well could have a lot of chapters, I mean, it... I mean, any given chapter, I mean, it's like four fights, and the fight is like two minutes, usually. So, the cutscenes, like, take forever. So, we could be looking at, like, a two-hour DLC story, or maybe even, like, three. So, 
we'll see what happens with that. I really, um, I was, I gotta be honest. So let's talk about. So I really don't have much attachment to Fujin, really. Um, he comes from an area of Mortal Kombat that I didn't really play much. Um, like obviously I know all the original characters, but the 3D era I don't really know too much about because those games were like on the Xbox and PS2 and the PS3. And in that time of my life, I didn't have those consoles. I was a Nintendo console person all the way up until I got an Xbox because there just were too many games I wanted to play that weren't on Nintendo. Um, and when was that? That was like 2008, 2009. Um, and then I start, and now I have like a PS4, and I have, a, you know, and I have a PS3 and all that. Um, so back in the PS2 era, that I sort of missed out because there were a couple of games that were on PS2 that were not on the GameCube. Um, and, you know, Ar I mean, there was Armageddon on the Wii, but, you know, I I was, like, still a little kid, <laughs> you know, at that time, and I didn't care about Mortal Kombat back then. So he comes from an era that I kind of completely missed. And even Shiva, I didn't really even care about Mortal Kombat yet when the reboot happened in, uh, what was it, 2011? Like, I, I back then I really didn't care much. Although it's funny, I had a lot of friends who played those games. Um, the first Injustice, obviously, Injustice 1 is what got me into it, um, into the whole thing. And then Scorpion showed up in Injustice, and I was like, well, I don't really know Scorpion all that well. And then, of course, um, I just got way more into it as time went on. Um, but, yeah, I think it would be really cool to play as Fujin because I don't really have much attachment to him. He comes from an era that I'm not really familiar with. And then Shiva, I don't really, I mean, I definitely played, like, I remember I, I played Mortal Kombat uh, 1, well, not 1, the reboot, at my uh, friend's dorm in college, and, like, yeah, I, I remember having fun with the game. I didn't know any of the characters back then. It was always a fun time. I just remember, I just remember one of my friends really beating me with Scorpion. Yeah, he was doing the, uh, the Hellport. He was going everywhere, and I was just like, thinking, Jesus Christ, like, I can't keep up with this, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, this is what I think the game is missing, and what it needs is more characters from a time that, I mean, Fuji, it's been, what, 15 years, I think, somebody said? They said something like 15 years or 13 years or something that Fujin has not been playable in a game. I mean, that's a really long time, right? Yeah, so, who knows? Anyway, let me move on to RoboCop. Uh, RoboCop is really cool because, um, honestly, when they revealed him, like, there was that leak that said Rob, and then people, people immediately went to RoboCop. And it's funny how that turned out to be true, and I kind of thought, yeah, yeah, I mean, I... That, my, I think everyone's issue was that we just thought he would play too much like Terminator. And after seeing some gameplay, he definitely doesn't play like Terminator. Um, it actually is cool seeing him in this game. Um, yeah, probably, I feel like he's not the hype, he's, he's like not the hype character they were hoping for, but like... I mean, like, for people who saw the movie, I, I don't think I've ever seen RoboCop. But I obviously, like, when I was a little kid, I played the RoboCop uh, NES game, and I really liked that game. So, like, I do have some attachment to RoboCop. Um, and I know people have wanted to always see RoboCop versus Terminator. It's funny because there's a death battle of them, there's an epic rap battle of those two, and now you there's a Mortal Kombat version of it where you can just go ahead. I still think it's funny that Freddy vs. Jason hasn't happened yet. Um, I feel like... I feel like that's like a weird... That's like a weird missed opportunity. Like, they should have brought Freddy back in MKX to fight Jason. But I guess that's something they can do in a future game. If they ever make that horror fighting game, which I think they're eventually going to make, I think that would be a really good idea. Like, honestly, I think Jason and Freddy would actually be, like, the, 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 the cover art. I feel like that would be a really good idea. 
you know, horror combat or, you know, what it, they'll come up with a clever name for it. You know. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just remembered thinking back now. I thought this game was going to be Mortal Kombat versus Slashers. I thought this was going to be like MK versus DC, except Mortal Kombat versus Slashers. And I thought half the roster was going to be Mortal Kombat, and I thought half the roster was just going to be you know, horror movie slashers, right? But now, since that did not happen, I think there's a good possibility that a horror fighting game is probably what they're going to do. Or they could or they could just keep introducing those characters as DLC, but I mean, did this game have any horror characters as DLC? I don't I don't think so. No. This game didn't have any horror characters as DLC. That, to me, is suspicious. Okay? Like, no Pennywise? Like, Pennywise would have been, like... Pennywise was, like, obvious. I know, obviously, you know, it's like maybe Stephen King didn't sign off on it or something. But, I don't know. I mean, I feel like that would have been an obvious inclusion. But if they are making, like, a horror fighting game, that's, like, that's, like, an obvious character to wait for that. Um... And the fact that Jason and Freddy have not been in the same game yet, that's like, that's like a perfect, like, advertising point. You know, you could have them on the box, like, Jason and Freddy, kind of like Scorpion and Sub-Zero. And if they make it a series, they can just do that every cover art. It could be Jason and Freddy. Um, but yeah, anyway, what I want to end on here is just the fact that Nint uh, Nintendo, um... So this is like my, you know, Scorpion and Smash moment. But, like, it's just funny to me that um, Nintendo actually got to reveal a friendship. I forgot to talk about the friendships yet. I'm also going to include my friendship edit at the end of this video. Maybe I'll put it at the beginning and the end. But, because I want people to see it. But, um... It's funny that Nintendo themselves got to reveal a friendship that we had not seen yet on their Twitter account. And I was just like, what? Like, of course that means nothing, right? Absol it means absolutely nothing. But we're getting to the point now where a lot of companies have stuff in Smash, and they don't. So I just feel like, at what point does this kind of... I mean, it's like, yeah, Aftermath is coming to the Switch and all that. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's really nothing to it. And what's funnier, I think, even about that is Ed Boon... This is all planned, I feel like. Ed Boon then said, yes, Aftermath is coming to the Switch. And, you know, he said whatever. He said whatever like that. And it was the Kung Lao friendship. And also, someone pointed this out in the replies. The train is Mario colors. It's red and then blue. Like, for his, you know, red and then the jeans. And I was like, is that a coincidence? And I'm like, it probably was, but that's probably... They probably, in their conversation, was like, which one should we do? And then they were like, oh, look, it's red and blue for Mario. Let's do that one. You know? Anyway, that's all I had to say. So, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Keep on fighting. Have a fantastic day. Yeah.